scripture readings from Matthew 7, just two verses, 13 and 14, about the two roads this morning. Matthew 7, 13. Jesus says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad's the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. But Lord, we thank you for the word of God this morning as we endeavor to break open the word of life here, Lord, we ask you to bless it to the preaching and the hearing here. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So... Jesus, in a nutshell here, takes two verses and paints a picture of the whole world for us. Verse 13, verse 14, he says, there's two roads in this world. He said, everybody's on one road or the other one. He said, some are going down the, a big, broad road, and that's the many. He said, they're going to destruction. He said, there's a straight and narrow road that there's few on, but that goes to life everlasting. So there's two groups that are traveling down the road of life. Uh, they can see each other. We know that we can see one another, but we have a hard time relating to one another. But I propose to you that there's a third group. The Lord sees two groups, but we on, on planet Earth here, we, we can see three different groups. I'm going to show to you. Uh, there's a view that Jesus has, and there's a view that we have. Uh, everybody's on one road or the other one, but there's a questionable road, too. We don't know which road some folks are on. First of all, let's look at the first group, the lost group. I want to bring your attention to, that's the group that Jesus simply calls them the many. The many are the lost people. Some of them are going down that road silently being lost, apart from God. Uh, some of them are actually combative. And we can see more and more of them that are combative these days. If you mention God to them, they'll be quick to tell you that they don't want to hear about your imaginary friend. People used to weren't, weren't so uh, bold for the devil like that, but they're getting more and more. But that's now. They're, they're tough right now. There's a day coming that they won't be so tough. My first cousin Chuck was uh, in Iraq when Saddam, the, back in the early 90s when Saddam first started launching the, the Scuds. And many of us, you know, we were watching on TV, and uh, just like the rest of the boys, the so we, they didn't know any more than we did about that the scuds were going to be duds. But my cousin was in that group that they were first coming at there, and he was in that. They put them all in that bunker, and they were down with their head between their knees, and they knew that they were coming, but uh, they didn't know what was going to happen. Were they going to die or not? And when he came home, he told me, he said, some of them boys that I served with, he said, man, he said, they, they, they were the most ungodliest people that you'd ever run into in your life. You'd think that they had never heard of God. But he said, when we was in that bunker, he said, everybody was praying out loud. And he said, some of them boys I noticed, I said, they, they was repenting of things they did, said, this getting right in Jesus' name. <laughs> and, it goes back to the old World War II sayings in World War I that there aren't any atheists in the foxholes. It's easy to be tough until you're looking down the barrel of death and with no hope, ain't they? Um, I invite you to, to, to read, Christians die well. You ever notice that? There's a difference in the way the lost die and the way the Christians die. Christians uh, have a hope. And I'll just invite you, if you've never seen it, the old Twilight Zone, the black and white one, Rod Serling with uh, Burgess Meredith as a star in this one called The Obsolete Man. And just watch that one. It, it, it's, it's, it's a good sermon for you right there. It shows you the difference the way Christians die and the way the world dies. These are the, the solidly lost people that it's obvious are going down that road. And the good news is these people that are going down that road, right, there's still hope for them. There's still hope, but while they're still alive and still got warm blood pumping through their veins, there, there's still hope for them. Now, that group that I said that we look at, that Jesus uh, knows which road everybody's on, is we, we look at folks sometimes, and I call them the questionably saved. I don't know which road some people are, are, are on. Uh, are they in with the many or are they in with the most? Uh, which group are they with? Which road are they on? But, you know, you, you look at these folks and the... Uh, and you realize, well, you know, they, they don't go to church and uh, they don't give to the kingdom work and they don't care if the church fails or not and they rarely think about God at all. To them, salvation 
is, if anything, nothing but an insurance policy that they went one day and took out this policy and just like their house insurance, they said they'll never think about it again until there's an emergency It's there for them. That's where a lot of people are living today, and I call them the questionably say They're professing Christians, if you ask them, but they are absolutely fruitless when it comes to the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus very carefully told us that we don't judge people's salvation, but there's a tension there. He said, but also, he said, you will recognize my people, though. By their fruits, you shall know them. That means we're going to recognize God's people, right? They're going to have fruits of Christians, and we'll identify them as obvious that they are Christian. Now, these folks uh, that are the questionably saved, they're fruitless. And I believe the first fruit that a Christian has, one of the, the, maybe the biggest fruit that a Christian has, is they will attend the assembly and worship. What John said what to us, what the Father seeks such to worship him. He saves you so that you worship him. Not because you have to, but when you're saved, you want to. But the questionably saved don't want to. You know, possibly a lot of them watch on the Internet, and they might even hit the like button or the heart button. We love likes and hearts. <laughs> hit that button, yeah. But if the like button or the heart button is the most that you do to support the kingdom of God, where's your passion for the Lord? Where's it at? That's fruitless. I'm not your judge, but I've been sent to tell you that you're living in rebellion to God. You're living in rebellion to God's word. Do not forsake the assembly. Hebrews 10, 25. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The fourth commandment. And if you're living in rebellion to the word of God, that means you're living in rebellion to God. And if you're living in rebellion to God, the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's just straight from the pages. And at best, you're the questionably saved. The Lord knows. I'm not your judge. And, and unfortunately, generally speaking, I think most of these folks are simply head saved. They think they're going to heaven but they've never allowed God to do a work in their heart. They've never had that changed nature. They're not a new creature. They're just uh, convinced in their head that they've got the insurance. And unfortunately, there's more hope for the former than the latter. Because in the former group, they know where they stand with God. But in this questionable group, they don't have any desire to get saved because they think that they're already saved. And uh, that's why the Bible says what Barb read this morning. Make your election and calling sure. Make, make sure about that. Well, thank God there's a third group that we see. And they're called the saved. Or in these texts here, they're called the, the few. Isn't that sad? Many and few. That, that literally says that most of the world is going to hell. But there's a limited few that are Christians that are going down the road to e eternal life. And the, the, the saved, those are the, the, the few. These are the folks that they, they sacrifice their time and their talents and their treasures joyfully. These are the, the folks that were, were flabbergasted and saddened by looking at the other group and seeing the way they act and what's going on. We're flabbergasted, shocked, but we're also saddened. Somebody told me before Sunday school this morning about getting unfit to be on jury duty because they ask you several questions. One of them, do you believe in God? The second one was, do you believe in the Bible? You can't serve. <laughs> Is that where we're living at today? <laughs> I said, I'd be more apt to say if they said, no, I don't believe in God and the Bible, then you're unfit to serve on, on, on a jury in, in this country. But I guess that's where it's flabbergasting, but it saddens to us because the many is what's running the show. But the few, they're willing to die for their Lord. They're willing to die for what they believe. And they'll receive the word of God. They'll stand on the word of God. And they'll stand up for the word of God. And these are the true Christians that Jesus said they'll be recognizable by their fruits. 
their behavior, the way that they act. They're giving, they're forgiving, and they're folks that try to love the unlovable. That's what the, the few are. They're quietly going through life, supporting their church and supporting their families, and they absolutely love to be in the assembly. That's because God's done that. God's put a work in their heart. So once again, we'll go back to the scripture that Barb read earlier from over in Peter. Make your election and your calling sure. Or to use Paul's words in Corinthians, I believe, it says, uh, let a man examine himself, whether he be in the faith. That's just different ways of saying, be sure of what road you're on. And if you're on the right road, that means you'll be following Jesus. And if you're following Jesus, how do you know? Because you are doing the things that Jesus does. That's not earning your salvation. That comes simply by grace through faith, but you're created unto good works. And if you are saved, it's going to show up in your life with evidences. You'll be doing the things that Jesus does. Lord, we thank you for the word of God today as we just took a few moments here to say, let everybody in the sound of this voice make their election and their calling sure. You can be deceived. We know that, Lord. The old devil's a master of deception. Help us to know that we've placed our trust in you and that we may, may we and others see evidences of that in our lives. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Stand and sing.